Hey y'all and welcome back to the party. It's your girl Britt Reacts and today we are reacting to Dave Chappelle thinks OJ Simpson might be chasing him. Netflix is a joke. Let's see what he has to say. Another answer. Doesn't it bring back good memories? <laughs> but I forgot how I forgot how like just how polarizing that OJ case was. And you know, I've met OJ Simpson on four different occasions in my life. And before the end of the show, I will tell you about each of those occasions. <laughs> the first time I met OJ Simpson, I was in Santa Monica. Santa Monica? Yeah. I can't believe a black dude was like, Santa Monica? Right, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, did someone just shout out Santa Monica like it was a hood? Like, what? Um, I love this jacket that he has with the, like, sh like sh his name on it, Chappelle, and, like, the C on the side is very... Um, like military, I love it. And I don't know why it was funny to me that he hit the mic with his knee. It was like knee slapping in a way. I don't know. I thought that was funny. This, I just already know, is going to be a hot mess express. Let's go. Yeah. I can't believe a black dude was like, Santa Monica. <laughs> he was the last name I was expecting to say that. Let's see your shoes. You got some bands on. What you got? <laughs> Santa Monica! At the time, I was 18. I had done a show, and then a guy from the club came up and was like, hey, O.J. Simpson's here, and he said he wants to meet you. I said, what? F yeah. I ran down the steps, <laughs> and O.J. was down there. He was like, hey, yo, man, how are you? It's very good to meet you, and uh, you're doing really good work, and I hope Good things happen for you in your life. He I sounds said, Man, just thanks, like him. Mr. Juice. <laughs> Standing beside him, what well, I don't know the nice way to say this, uh, his soon-to-be slain wife. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> um, his impression of OJ is pretty good. OJ does have that like very deep kind of announcer voice. Um Gosh, Dave, I, we knew he was taking it here, didn't we? Didn't we? Didn't we, folks? Hey, this, uh, his soon-to-be slain wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, man the f but you're not going to make it to the end of this show. <laughs> this man the f He's talking to me. She's All dead. Right. You already know. We know what happened. We don't know who did it, but we know what happened. I should tell you that woman was very nice to me. She actually embraced me. She said, I think you're adorable. And she hugged me. Adorable. She goes, good luck to you. And she held me for a long time. And I whispered in her ear, are you trying to get us both killed? <laughs> um, I, this is such a pet peeve of mine when like peers or you have to be like, a certain age above me to call me a name or tell me I'm something like adorable or sweetie. Otherwise it feels super condescending. Like, I don't know why that bothers me so much. The fact that he said that she called him adorable. Like, first of all, Dave Chappelle's not adorable. Let's just all agree right now, he's not adorable. He's a lot of things, talented, funny, attractive, but not adorable. <laughs> You call a grown man adorable. I don't know why that is like so triggering to me. But seriously, like, especially like if you're just maybe 10 years older than me, it's like, you could be my sibling. Please don't call me sweetie, sweetheart, adorable. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I didn't say that, but. That was like the first did. time in a nutshell. He was the second time I met O.J. Simpson. It was right after the trial of the century. There I was, now a young man of probably 23. O.J. Simpson was the most famous or infamous face on planet Earth. I was in a restaurant in Beverly Hills with my agents. I wasn't alone in the restaurant, but I was alone. I was the only black person in the restaurant. I know exactly what he meant when he said, I wasn't alone, but I was alone. <laughs> oh, 
it is too early in the day. I'm I have my concealer catcher today because I wore a load of concealer and a load of mascara. Why? I don't know. Why then would I start the day off with Dave Chappelle? No clue. No clue. But I was alone. I was the only black person in the restaurant. <laughs> and in the 90s, that felt very uncomfortable. <laughs> now I tend to enjoy it at this age. <laughs> I was having dinner with my agents celebrating a deal that they told me was lucrative, but I later learned it sucked. Oh my God! <laughs> and suddenly, a group of women walked by. Every race was in that group. Black, white, Asian, Latina, white, white, and white again. They were all gorgeous. What's I watched wrong? them walk by. Then I saw a familiar face. Al Collins, the man from the infamous Bronco Chase, walked by and embraced one of the women, and they walked towards the door. Couldn't believe what I saw. And then, close behind him, was O.J. Simpson, newly released from jail. The restaurant fell still. I was shocked. I didn't mean The way he's telling this story is so dramatic. The restaurant fell still. Like, it's like giving um, snaps. Like the, the person who um, narrates snaps, that's what this is giving. And I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm like actually really invested in what's about, about to happen. Like I'm stuttering. Give me a break. Released from jail. The restaurant fell still. I was shocked. I didn't mean to say it out loud, but it just came out. <gasps> OJ! <laughs> he stopped. Turned around to see who said it. Saw my black face and correctly assumed it was me. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting in the corner of the booth. He leaned over all the white people I was having dinner with and shook my hand. How are you, young man? He looked in my eyes and I could see in his eyes that he didn't remember meeting me the first time. <laughs> and then he walked away. And I looked back at my agents, and all of them had nothing short of disgust on their faces. And the only one with the courage to voice their disgust was a woman named Sharon, who used to... I actually, like, I can't imagine, like, the climate of, you know, the world if he just had gotten out of jail after all of this, like... You know, like it was such a big thing. And I was very young when this happened. Like I was super young. I have memories of like hearing the TV on and stuff, but I was super young. So I don't have much to add to the conversation, but I just can't imagine this man just got out of jail. It's super controversial that he was acquitted and very polarized and very split. And you see him in a restaurant full of people who are polarized and split or probably, let's be honest, all leaning towards one side because most people were like, what the heck? Um, for somebody to be like, OJ, what's up? Like, like he was still the infamous football playing OJ. Like, I can't imagine the drama that he is telling this story with is actually pretty true. <laughs> the restaurant fell silent. Like, everyone's probably clutching their pearls watching Dave Chappelle have a conversation, a, like, kind, polite, almost admirable conversation with, with this man. That's funny. And the only one with the courage to voice their disgust was a woman named Sharon who used to represent me. <laughs> How could you, she said. How could you shake hands with that murderer? I said, Sharon, with all due respect, that murderer ran for over 11,000 minutes. <laughs> and he was acquitted, so, you know, fun. And he was acquitted. <laughs> Glove didn't fit. Glove didn't fit. Get over yourself. Oh my God. Third time I met O.J. Simpson. He's really about to tell us all three times. He really is. This is, this is it's happening. It's happening, folks. Simpson. <laughs> Third time I met O.J. Simpson, I was doing great in life. I, I just finished the second season of Chappelle Show. Man, those were good days. I was playing a comedy club in Miami. This, this foursome right here, this, this 
group of people at the bottom of my screen to the right of Dave Chappelle are upsetting me. They have been so stoic every time. Like, just, I can't, like, don't be a fun sponge. Why are you here? Dave Chappelle is funny. Like, literally, why are you here? At the very least, if you're not actively laughing, laughing, put a grin on your face. It's Dave Chappelle. Put a smile on your face. <laughs> what is happening? Why are they there? It's like someone forced them to be there. They don't want to be there. That annoys me. I just don't appreciate people who don't appreciate like the setting and the in the in the the environment and the entertaining and the amount of work it takes to be an entertainer. Why? Just go home, sit on the couch and stare at the TV like that. I don't know. Rant over. Man, those were good days. I was playing a comedy club in Miami, the improv. I don't know if you've ever been, but if you have, you'd know. The door for the green room is right on the stage. Can you imagine such a thing? If I walked out of the door of the green room, bam, I'm just right here, it's right from the dressing room. And I did that. I walked out and the whole crowd was like, hooray. hooray. And I looked, ma'am, <laughs> as close as you are to me, I saw him as soon as I came out, the juice. The juice. <laughs> and I saw recognition in his eyes and it filled me with pride that he knew who he was. I was. I didn't acknowledge his presence because it was a white audience and I didn't want to start a panic. <laughs> but I did my show. Show went great. I said, good night, everyone. They all said, yay! And I didn't say nothing to OJ, but I just gave him a signal, let him know I knew he was there. <laughs> and I walked into the green room and OJ was already in there. Nah. How is that possible? Wouldn't he have had to walk past it if the stage, the door was on the stage? How is that possible? <laughs> and OJ was already in there. <laughs> I was like, how the f is this possible? I was scared. Okay, they're laughing now. I feel better. They're laughing now. It's okay. I was like, how the f is this possible? I was scared. And then my friends came in and we all started talking. We sat down on the couch, and I'm just telling you what I saw with my own eyes. You can believe me or not believe me. But in my experience, O.J. Simpson, one of the nicest men I'd ever met. He was nice to me. He was nice to my friends. The conversation was filled with warmth and levity, humor, and wisdom. We talked for 90 minutes, and then suddenly the Jew said, you know what? I've got to be going. But it's good to see you again, and I'm glad things went so well. I said, thanks, Juice. And my friend said, yeah, goodbye, Mr. Juice. They're new to the game. <laughs> Thanks, Juice. Goodbye, Mr. Juice. Like, what? <laughs> They're new to the game. <sighs> Dave Chappelle is ridiculous. They're new to the game. <laughs> he said, no, thank you for your hospitality. Good night, guys. And we said, good night. And he just walked out of the room. And as soon as the door closed, we all looked at each other like, that did that. I feel, I can feel. I can feel like. We were in the room. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. This was like some type of encore. Um, that's so true. Sometimes you really can like feel not not to say I don't know anything about that situation but that's a true thing like you can really feel an aura like that was true like as soon as somebody leaves the room you're like mm, what she told me was true like you know what I mean like that's such that's such a true thing that has happened to me so many times in my life like everyone in the room just looks at each other and be like mm-hmm mm-hmm uh-huh like, we all know <laughs> I don't know anything about this situation I was like three years old when it happened but I just think that circumstance happens quite often. All right, let's see what this is. Hey, I forgot. Oh, it is an awful The fourth time I met O.J. Simpson. Oh, he did say four. The fourth time is not the funniest time, but it was the last time I'd see the juice. I'd see the juice. For some reason, I was at the Kentucky Derby. It's a very long story. <laughs> this is right after I quit Chappelle's show in spectacular fashion. 
It was a party hosted by Michael Jordan, and every athlete I've ever admired was in that room. Uh, side note, I know of this Chappelle show. I've probably seen less than a handful of episodes because I just was not allowed to watch things like that growing up. Um, I wasn't, like, super into comedy growing up either. So I, I don't know. Like, I know there are, like, cultural references and memes um, because of the Ch Chappelle show. But, like, I'm the girl that sits in the corner and, like, because <laughs> I don't know any of them. Like, I don't know any of them. I didn't really, like, literally get introduced to Dave Chappelle until, like, after college. And by introduced, I mean, like, no – anything about him outside of the nutty professor it's a sad sad life it's a sad sad life i've ever admired was in that room yes and then i saw a familiar face by the bar standing there drinking alone it was chris tucker now i love chris you tucker. have to remember at this time we were both technically missing And we went over and we're talking with one another and mother amazed to see us together. Seeing me and Chris Tucker at that point would be like seeing Bigfoot riding a unicorn. <laughs> you wouldn't believe that's what you were saying. Okay, please explain to me. Well, obviously Dave said he had quit the Chappelle show, so I'm assuming he went on like a hiatus. I do know like there was a point in time where Chris Tucker had some legal issues. So is that what he, like what's he referring to here? Why, why is this such a magical moment that they're together? Let me know in the comments. Bigfoot riding a unicorn. <laughs> you wouldn't believe that's what you were saying. <laughs> and then, through all the gawkers, a familiar face pushed to the crowd. Here he was again. The juice. <laughs> he had his camera ready. He was like, Dave, Chris, good to see you guys. Hey, come on, guys. Let's all get together for a picture. And at the same time, me and Chris were like, no. Nah. <laughs> Good for business right now. Sorry, Juice, my career is too flimsy to survive a picture with you. <laughs> That's the end. Good night. <laughs> okay, so apparently there were two very. I, 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 yeah, I don't know like what the controversy was about. I know it was a big deal when Dave quit. Um, but I don't know like the reasoning behind it. So I guess maybe he was like on thin ice. I don't know. Let me know in the comments why that was such a big deal and why their both their careers are like flimsy were his words. Um, this was funny. I love the storytelling. I love the like dramatic pauses and the juice references. Like it was just good, good fun. And if you ever go see a comedian in the uh, and you're in the audience, just put a smile on your face, even if you think they're terrible. <laughs> Someone's watching you. All right, please go have the day you deserve.